Joe, Gage, Max, and Joe. Gage, Max, Joe, Gage, Max, Gage, and Joe. Max and Joe. YouTube live show with Gage, Max, and Joe. Never fight up and ready, fight up and ready to go. Gage, Max, Gage, Max, and Joe. Gage, Max, Joe, Gage, Max, and Joe. Gage, Max, Joe, Gage, Max, Gage, Joe. Max and Joe. YouTube live show. All right, we're joined here now by Dalton Solbrig in his own house, the leader or the, the highest kill percentage in UH history, the, uh, just played in Croatia this year. Joining his house, Dalton, thank you for joining us today. Hey, thanks for coming, guys. It's glad to host the, uh, <laughs> the Out of System Boys. It's our first in person, so this is going to be so much just uh, laid back, as you can see we're on his couch right now, so we're just trying to lay back, trying, trying to keep it real. Now, Dalton, you just played this past year in Croatia. How would you kind of explain your... It was a good. It was good. It was a good start for me because uh, I got to play a lot. You know, I was a starter. I I had like a pretty big role for my first year playing pro, and I think that was really good for me to to grow and improve. and And it led to me getting a a good contract now in Germany. So I think it was really really special. Yeah. The and I think a lot of people who watch this obviously know that you sp uh, spent four years at Hawaii, uh, and I think your time there, like H said, you're the highest hitting percentage in the history of UH program, not just like in that four time block, but what was that again? Five? Humble brag. <laughs> 500 even. Five, I don't know off the top of my head, but 500. 500. 502 man. How many yeah. percentage works yeah. for anybody who doesn't know? You take your total kill subtracted by your total errors and you divide that over your total attempt. So to be 500 is pretty ridiculous. I mean, if you just hit that in one match, that's really, the, the fact that you average out a whole career is uh, very impressive, and especially from the middle position. For you, I want we we have a lot of people that ask us about college athletics and different parts about it. But what was the biggest thing from a college athletics perspective, um, just a part of the program? Um, what was the biggest takeaway you had from uh, that standpoint? Just a good work ethic, I think, is the biggest thing because I mean we had so many examples of that at Hawaii, especially guys that maybe weren't like the top recruits in the nation, but ended up being some of the best players in the nation junior senior year and I think that really speaks to um, effort in the in the gym getting extra reps effort in the weight room and just all around being good dudes and really being bought into the program that we had yeah no and I, I think being in Hawaii makes it even more special and the experience there I think it's very there's nowhere else in the US that comes even close to the experience you have there especially being on the volleyball team what can you have from living in Hawaii what's the takeaway that you had from that living in that culture living in that um, in that? um Man, I mean, I love how uh, how important family is over there too, um, and it was a really good experience for for me because, I mean, Max and I know, and you guys have seen it now where we live. It's pretty <laughs> drastically different. Yeah, yeah. And sure. uh, it was a little bit of a culture shock at first, you know, and seeing this part of part of the U.S. and being so so different. And I think it was, I mean, going to Hawaii is almost like going to a different country, really. And, uh, man, I, just, I loved it, though. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, absolutely. The, the, I, I don't know if you guys, anything about Hawaii, if you had anything to add on to that. Yeah, I was going to say, so a lot of times my, so, the, in the 2019 season, I ended up rooming with Dalt a lot. So we, were, we were always road trip roomies. But I wanted to know, like, what's the living situation like there? And as far as culture shock goes, do you have any interesting stories or any funny stories about when you first got to Gross. Croatia, you told me some funny stuff about going to the Google grocery Translate, store. Or... Like Google Translate story. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah, I'll tell. But uh, um, it was definitely a culture shock going to Croatia. I mean, uh, my team, you know, the the town that I was in in Croatia is kind of like a touristy town. It was uh, near Split, which is where the airport is, the biggest airport. Um, so everybody spoke a little bit of English where I was. Not perfect English, obviously. Um, so it was definitely, you know, you would go to the grocery store and <laughs> you would like ring up your items and then the cashier would say something and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then she would say it again and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> and usually it's just like, do you want a bag? And that's like <laughs> all they're really asking me. Um, and then, yeah, when, I remember, uh, this is the Google, the Google Translate store that uh, we went out to a club. I think it was like the first or second week that I was out there. And the guys took me out, and my whole team was Croatian, so I was I was just sticking out like a sore thumb. <laughs> we had uh, one Bosnian guy and one uh, Serbian guy, but I'm American. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so they all spoke the same language, and I'm just sitting there, like, smiling. <laughs> and And uh, we went out to this club and found this cute girl, and I was like, let's go, let's go, uh, let's go talk to her. <laughs> and uh, I go up and was like, hey, like, introduce myself, you know. Put on some of the, the good old Dalt charm <laughs> that, you guys, that you guys have all seen. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it basically, she just kind of like looked at me and was just like, Ooh. she said something in Croatian. I was like, nothing. <laughs> no way. Wait, did you go into it thinking that she knew how to speak English? A little bit, yeah. How, 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 how far into it till you realize that she couldn't understand what you were saying? About three, maybe four <laughs> seconds. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay, minutes, you're like, oh. Like, she's just looking at me like, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so then it turned out I was just you use my phone like on Google Translate. I, I open it up, and I like type something like, "Hey, like my name's Dalton" or something, something stupid like that. <laughs> and then it just was going back and forth like we we're just passing my phone back and forth on Google Translate, <laughs> like switching from Croatian to English and English to Croatian. And yeah, I got her number. So hey, <laughs> Joe, you said that uh, you were telling us the other day that that people. Uh, what was it your your assistant coach went out to a club or said not since it was one of the players went out to a club and he's like Get, Joe bring your passport show the girl yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah my my uh, my roommates would always try to get me to do that because I always had my passport on me and they would be like show her show, show your passport show her <laughs> show and uh, yeah I don't know maybe they didn't you have to be you have to be yeah. careful though sometimes and like when you start yeah I I don't I'm nervous most of the times when I go to places that I don't know. To let people know that you're American, because you don't know, like, they, there could be very two drastic reactions to that. Yeah, that's very true. Their Going experience the with Americans and what they were taught in school and stuff, their beliefs on American and the culture in there is, could be very positive or very negative <laughs> in both directions. Obviously, I haven't been in Eastern Europe, but um, we've had what? We've had Molana, she's a coach, yeah. and Rado, and who else is there? Is Philip? Is that, that's here in Germany. Is that, is that it's Eastern? like Central Europe, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because we've been on the good spectrum, the true spectrum. I mean, these guys are wearing like cowboy hats. We don't look the good side of that. So, yeah. I mean, it's got to be definitely like crazy because like Eastern Europeans, if they're, are, is it all like Milan's where they're all like happy, kind of like yeah. lucky, just like yeah. talking a lot? It's a, they're very, very prideful, but they're still, they're really nice people and they're exactly like Milan. And that was actually one of my favorite things going over there is, I've been with Milan for four years, so I already, like, I hear the guys on the court, like, cussing and swearing, yeah, and I'm like, you know, yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot, we had a lot of Balkans and Eastern Europeans on our team. Yeah. But the one thing, Gage is bringing up here when we were discussing what we wanted to talk about, and the thing is, that one of the stories that stands out with me, I know, I think he was going to get into it here in a second, <laughs> with Dalton from our senior season. So, alright, so before you reveal, you'll probably catch on what, what the story is. So, I remember it was... Big West Championships, right? Big West oh, Championships. Oh my. And so what happened was we played in the semis. We played Irvine. And I, I think I recorded zero digs that whole match. <laughs> zero digs. And it's because I was just so low energy. I think last year I took it for granted. Sometimes I was like, all right, I, we know we're going to win this game. So I was just low energy. And like, I, like, my play drives off my energy, right? I just wasn't playing well. And then I felt, and then we were playing Long Beach next. I was like, I need to be pumped up. Like, I can't have that happen again. And I always know you take pre workout before the game. <laughs> yeah. You're getting, like, amped up. So I was like, Dolph, man. Like, I, uh, I, need, I, I, like, I need some, like, I got you. I got some pre workout for you before the game. <laughs> which, which is a totally legal substance. It's not anything illegal or anything. Um, what, Basically, what, just what, caffeine. What, what is pre workout? Just caffeine, right? This was just caffeine. Just ca- caffeine and sugar. No this one was just caffeine. Yeah. And he doesn't drink coffee. He doesn't I, drink caffeine. Like, I this, hardly. Yeah. Ever consumes caffeine, so and and so, so I go and I'm like, Dalton, right for the game, like, uh, mention we're wearing white shorts too. <laughs> yeah, and I, was, and I was and I was in all white. Keep that in mind. Um, It'll be important later. <laughs> so, so, so we go and uh, uh, I remember I was like, you're like, yeah, I can't find my normal creatine, but here's the I haven't used it in a while, but here, take this one. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, how do I just stir it up? Give me about like this much, like this much, of it, and just down it. And I was like, so when do I start feeling the effects? <laughs> and you're like, you're like, yeah, 30, 45 minutes, and we get to go. I'm like, sweet, let's go. <laughs> so we get out there, and I'm a naturally amped guy to begin with. So I was like, this might not have an effect. Of it. And within like 10 minutes, I felt like there was like needles. <laughs> on my arm. I was just like, oh, let's go. <laughs> Foaming at the mouth. The warm up too. You're like yeah. super into it. Like, let's go. <laughs> 10 minutes after, I'm just like, dead. no. Yeah. But I kept going. And then I was like, I feel, I was, I was feeling good. I was playing good. 
If it, now, for those of you who watched this match, it went in the fifth set. Luckily, it was like 15, like 10, the fifth set. And it was like an over two hour match. With After the second set, I go, I'm like, oh, I don't feel so good. I don't, I don't feel so good. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna crap my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, luckily, we have halftime. I just sprint to the bathroom and I just start, like, just like going number two, like crazy, just like, pouring out of me, like, oh, I'm like, where's Gage? It's like, in there. I was like, oh, it feels so good. So, we go out again. And I'm like, fourth, by the end of the fourth set, I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. I was, I was like clenching my butt. I remember. And then by the fifth set, the fifth set, by, what was it? 13, like eight or something. I was like, guys, I need, we got this just quick. We got to go to the bathroom. So we go, we go. I'm like, I'm like holding it in and we win. And you can see on the video, I think it wasn't on, you can, I don't know if you can see on the, uh, Spectrum Sports. You can, semi. you can see no, it on this the, is the, this is the final song. <laughs> yeah. And, and you can see at, uh, uh, if you look at the, if you go and look at the, um, Hawaii, uh, behind the scenes of our Big West Championship, you can see me cheer. We get, we win, we're like, yes. And I scream, I need to go to the bathroom, get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. And I sprint back to the bathroom. And I'm there for like 10 minutes. And by the time I get back, it's like the medal ceremonies. And then after that, we get fed and we get pyology. I'm like, I don't feel so good. And I couldn't, and I was just like, crap myself. Could have been <laughs> pretty. So what do you, have you ever had that experience? Like, <laughs> I'm like, no. After no. That, I'm never going to use creatine again after that. that Could have been bad with the white uniforms, too. That's true. Recipe for disaster. Like I kinda, dude, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm, I'm, I didn't even want to move for a dig sometimes. I was like, I can't. Like, I remember I told someone, I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh! <laughs> Just, what's, the, what's the access for you like in, uh, over in Europe? Do you have access to like the same sort of supplements they use? Yeah, I mean, the pre-workout that I use is basically just like caffeine. It's like drinking like some like strong cup of coffee basically. Yeah. Well, but I just don't really like coffee, so that's what I usually use to get myself nice and amped. Not as quite as amped as uh, as Gage's uh, bee hole, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so so this season, I think most people know that you're going over to Germany. S V Gau Luneburg. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. The Deutschland. Yeah. I might have, the Deutschland. Yeah. Uh, you know, I might have mispronounced that, but. Uh, Stefan Hubner, for anybody who doesn't know, is the head coach over at Lunenburg. One of the, when he was playing, he was one of the top medals in the entire world. Uh, you can check out a video on him. He's he was a stud, and I heard a lot of good things from him coaching. What what are some things that you're looking forward to? Um, and from this season, what are the kind of expectations the team has that um, the coaches let you know? Uh, from a team perspective, um, Stefan and I we had talked a little bit about um, just like having a young team. You know, he really wanted to like kind of rework the program more towards like a, a younger team that just wants to come out like whether we're playing a really bad team or we're playing the best team in Europe like mm -hmm. we go and we try to like destroy him yeah you know and that that kind of attitude that it doesn't matter who's across the net you go you play with energy and I think that that's something that we had in Hawaii for a while and I think that's one of the reasons why he wanted to bring um some younger guys in yeah um for me personally I think um it's going to be a really good spot for me to grow. It's going to be it's definitely going to be a challenge for sure. You know, so, I mean, some of the best, you and I were talking yesterday, like some of the best middles in the world are in, are in the German yeah. league, in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a really good test for me. Um, and I signed a, a two year contract. So I have two years there to kind of, um, find some good ground and, and keep know. building up my game. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and I've heard, I, I was in the Bundesliga last year and I heard Lundberg's a very good place where guys develop a lot, especially middles. Uh, learning from him, he has a lot to teach and you always see a lot of young middles come out of there uh, and move on to big clubs. So that's a really awesome opportunity for Dalton. And for, uh, from a Lundberg perspective, do you know anything about the town or like where not a whole lot. I mean, it's it's going? it's near Hamburg, which will be yeah. that'll be fun to have like a, a big city to go to. And I've never been to Germany, but I took German in high school. Awesome. How well so. do you speak it? Better than me. Eh, no, I never was. I was never fluent, but you can probably get by though. Honestly, I'll get by. I know how to like, order food. I know how to like Rock say, fish. "Hey, yeah. what's up?" and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Let's get. Say let's sup, Ante. <laughs> Should be good to go. <laughs> sup, Ante. <laughs> we've been since we've been here. It's, it's kind of funny, you guys, but I'm sure you guys probably don't use that kind of language when, when you're just with like your Chicago friends. But like we've been using it, like with people we met, like Ante or Mahalo <laughs> since we're here. You know? yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah. Anywhere. No, it's weird. Yeah, because uh, when I'm hanging out with you guys, obviously we talk like we talk pigeon sometimes. It's just kind of funny, and then I hang out with my friends here, and I'm like, all right, they're not gonna know. 
a lick of yeah. any of that. They're gonna yeah. think I'm an idiot. I mean, I am. <laughs> yeah, you kind of like tone it down and go back to like yeah. the Chicago kind of talking about that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's pretty. pretty well, funny. yeah, let's get into a little bit why we're here. I think a lot of people are wondering why Gage and I are even here. Like, <laughs> just went out to hang out. <laughs> um, and the show. Just chilling. We'll, we'll let Dalton because Dalton is the most experienced in the reason why we're here. So we're here for the name of the event is the Wildpaca Boat Ride. Uh, we're gonna let Dalton here kind of explain what this is, but Gage and I, we got out here, travel out here a week early, so we work out, train. Um, but let's let Dalton here explain the the whole event and what uh, what's going on with us for this week. Yeah, so this is like, uh, I think it's the biggest outdoor tournament in the U.S. Like including sand? Because the, well, there's sand at the at the Wapaka. That's true. Because I know seaside in Oregon. Is pretty actually you know. Is it bigger than six man? So when I was told when I was asking people in California the way they describe this tournament is it's the Midwest version of six man, but people say it's even more fun than six man. Where's six man? I haven't been to six Manhattan Beach. Oh, six man. Oh like the beach Manhattan Beach. So I yeah. I, I haven't been either. This is my first time at either event. Um but is it like have you heard that and is it similar Yeah, I mean <laughs> if you if you ask anybody from this area or anybody that lives up in Wisconsin, this is basically like a holiday. It's you mark it on your calendar like as soon as the dates come out, um, and you're thinking about it all year long. And at, whenever you know guys come home from the summer that are playing in college or playing professional, it's like all you're thinking about. It's yeah. like the first thing is like, all right, I got to get my team ready for uh, for what pack. I got to start playing grass, and um, it and that's really what it is. It's just like this big celebration of volleyball, and yeah. and it's grass volleyball, which um, is pretty unique. You know, usually indoor and beach are the most popular, and not a lot of people watch or play grass but it's in my opinion and you know, I think you guys would probably agree it's kind of like in between beach and grass yeah there's a lot of elements there's a lot of the same rules as beach you use like a beach volleyball to play with um but you're playing in grass you know you're still at pretty much your full athleticism yeah you're not any slower you can still jump just as high um and it's three on three is the main event uh so it's kind of unique. And there's, like, most people, you look at videos online, it's just mainly just videos at three on three, but there's literally, like, if you go online, look at the website, while packing boat ride, every single possible age group, division, uh, co-eds, doubles, triples, they got quads, like, any anything you think of is at this tournament, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Max, have you even, have you even heard about this? Oh, for sure, yeah. I've had a ton of friends that played it, but usually, actually, it. the last couple of years, I wasn't in... Illinois at this time. Like, I was doing summer school this time last year, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because we, 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 I mean, I had never heard of it until this point, right? And then your adults, like, playing in Wapak, I was like, I don't, I don't even know what it is, but then I hear it's like this huge, huge event. <laughs> you know, because grass bubble, the most grass bubble we've ever played was our, our camp, uh, our high school hosted grass tournaments case, like 2v2. Um, other than that, we haven't played in what, four or five years? Grass bubble, yeah. We haven't played outdoor ball. Yeah, we had to get, first we, of all, we, we we play like one beach tournament every two, three years. <laughs> Pop our faces up. But no, it's like grass is like, as a, from, from a defender standpoint, is way harder because it's one of those things where it's like sand you can kind of, and you, you think you wouldn't, but you'd be, you're easier moving in sand than you are in grass. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's a little slippery. You're not slipping around. Exactly. Well, yeah. also, I think for defenders, they have, they don't have that like hesitation because even on the grass, you're still hitting hard things and so you're a little more off balance. On the sand, you're hitting, it's like really soft. And so you yeah, still kind of. true that mental hesitation you need to kind of get rid of on the grass. And, like, there's going to be some big names in this tournament. What was it? I saw online. It was, I know, TJ. TJ DeFalco's here. Scott Static is here. There's a bunch of, like, who, who the There's a bunch of AVP guys, too. Yeah. yeah. So it should be good. And, and for a lot of good competition. Who, Paul, you're asking, uh, they're doing, they're taking a bunch of precautions with the COVID thing. Yeah. They had to cut down almost, like, half the amount of teams that are coming. Um, and so they have like, all these health regulations, the health Governing board's like uh, gonna be there, making sure that uh, everything is done correctly and that everything's kind of set up right. And it's gonna they're gonna be doing their best to uh, make sure that they're following those guidelines. So that's awesome. Ensuring that everybody's safe. That's a really important time, especially yeah. during this. You uh, said there were like 160. Period. Usually, usually it's like 160 courts. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That's There's usually a 60 courts. Ridiculous amount of courts. That's what 40 teams now for the three. So what besides them all? What is like. What makes this event? Because I mean, there's like tons of grass ball tournaments throughout the U.S. What? Why do people love this event so much? Like, what makes this so unique? Would you say? Uh, I would say the most thing that makes it unique is the size, the size of the the tournament, and I think 
part of that is the venue is over at like this big farm. This guy had this farm and he ended up just like converting his farm into just yeah. to a place to do a bunch of events. He's got this huge barn yeah. that he kind of turned into like a restaurant bar for this stuff. They do like weddings up there. They do like the grass volleyball tournaments. And, um, and I think the other part is <laughs> the, it's kind of just like the partying aspect is, yeah. is pretty big too. It's Which, not going to happen this year because yeah. normally everybody comes and they get a campsite and you camp, you tent, you put up a tent for the, for the weekend. And uh, they're they're cutting that out this year, which is going to be kind of kind of a bummer because it's kind of a place you go and um, you meet a lot of new people. It's a social event, too, like right? Major yeah, social exactly. Event. And especially guys like like Max and I that live in this area, you end up seeing guys that you played club with like when, when you were 15. 14, 15 yeah. years old that you haven't seen in six, yeah. seven years. And I think that's a really cool uh, a really cool environment. For sure, I think it, it sounds like I've never been a six man, but. Northern California needs to get an event like that. That'd be super cool. This is right. The, yeah, there you go. Yeah. The, I, I'll fly out. Like, so for Gage and I, we, I know for like a fact, we love playing against just a holes or guys that <laughs> talk through the net to us. And so Gage and I, we do a lot of research. We go on. We've been going online, watching a lot of videos on the tournament, just kind of get an idea of how people play, the styles they play with. Because three man is like totally different for us. We haven't really played that before. And for like ways to defend, I don't know. We we love watching video. And it seems like that's a the trash talk and the kind of gamesmanship is a big part of what's going to be happening this weekend. Uh, we were wondering your experience with this tournament, if that's going to be happening for sure, because I know we have tons of stories. Whenever we go down to like Santa Cruz or we're playing tournaments, Gage and I are always the ones who uh, everyone's cheering against. Yep. And Not because we're angels. We've had, we've had one guy, he was, they, we were beating him and like he had like, it was in the playoffs and he had one like last hope. So we pulled rips off his pants and he's wearing this Speedo. And we were like laughing so hard that it was so hard to play. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. That's the thing about uh, or on this because I'm sure this is the same. When it comes, this is why I like the indoor. And I and like I said, beach and indoor. You think okay, not that different, but they're totally different cultures for one. Yeah. I feel like outdoors more kind of like, and it can be grass, it can be uh, sand, it can be anything really. But I feel like it's more kind of clicky. Right? Oh yeah, indoor, totally. It's like it, it, and it's like, and that's why I hate it. And there's like. Probably more a holes out there, too. <laughs> and, they, and they drink more, like they, they yeah. turn into more ales. So that's why I like the indoor better because it's like that. And we're usually on the the other end of the clicks where people are because we, like I said, we pop in terms two or three years and they don't like losing to us like young guys, right? Yeah, and getting smacked on. So it's like I always kind of know that. So that's what he's talking about. Where we like we, there's we see a lot of like a holes out here, and I mean, so we're gonna be trying to. I mean, I, I love shutting is, it, is that true though? Like, yeah, is that, like is that a big part? Oh, of yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we're definitely gonna play some teams that that are a-holes for sure I mean it's gonna happen and um, from like the audience standpoint I think it's it's not too bad they pretty much I mean they just like watching volleyball they're kind of yeah. just there to watch right. there won't be a pun like guys yelling at us and throwing stuff at us like anything like yeah. that and, no speedos I wish um, no speedos yeah um, but there, yeah you're definitely gonna see some some like older guys that maybe they don't really play uh, professional or at a collegiate level anymore and they're kind of you know yeah. trying to like prove themselves that they're still they're still in it to win it, and um, and then, like I said, this is a big tournament. You know, there's what we'll call like a couple grand in prize money, so it's there's a lot of incentives to win. Um, and uh, one of the best things about having the Worsleys with me, other than the fact that they're absolute ballers, is that I don't think I've ever met anyone that hates losing more than these guys right here. <laughs> gonna be ripping those so, uh, and shirts off. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be good for us. No, the, the environment of the tournament looks like it's like perfect for all three of us, like our team. The, uh, I think we all kind of like thrive in that type of like back and forthness and like uh, between the net. Yeah, I think absolutely. We play better because there's some obviously there's some players who don't play well in those <laughs> situations, sure. but um, but there's also I mean they're also what games are they streaming there? Just those, the just the finals, I think. So, so uh, that's what I was getting into. Anybody, we know we have listeners from Chicago, Wisconsin, the kind of around here. If you're in the area and you want to come say hi, for sure, come on down to the Wapaka. Uh, this is, uh, it's going to be over the, this weekend here. And we're vlogging, so you can get in our video yeah, yeah. as well. And you can get in our vlog for the weekend too, for sure, if you're out of, out of system fans. The uh, the other thing is, let us know down in the comments here if you guys want us. We might do like an Instagram live for some of the match or we'll... Well, we're also we got some sort of live stream. So for the playoff matches, we're also we're thinking about like just so because people haven't like seen like the last time people saw us. I mean, I'm not saying people. I mean, I'm assuming people kind of want to see like Hawaii. The Hawaii guys get back together. So <laughs> that's why I'm saying 
we're we're probably gonna be videotaping the play. Well, we make it to playoffs and <laughs> the playoffs and hopefully win a bunch of matches, win the win the win the thing. Um, we're gonna be kind of taking videos and we'll post it on our YouTube channel. So make sure you guys kind of stay tuned for that. So a lot of videos coming out, um, but it should be good. I think the best thing about uh, it's like I said, we kind of vlog on this whole trip. The best thing is that we went to Japan, you know, and uh, I'm not saying I did. It. I'm sorry. I'm not saying I did an amazing job or anything like that, but um, we got to, you kind of get to like kind of revisit it. Like sometimes, oh like, yeah, totally. we made a video. We kind of didn't really vlog. Just kind of made a video of this, the sites or whatever, and I put it on my personal YouTube channel, which I never look at. Um, <laughs> but uh, I put it there, and it's just kind of fun. Like sometimes when you like miss Sick it, video, yeah. and you just kind of just look at it, you're like, Dang, yeah, that was such good times, you know. And I Absolutely. think that's good about this, you know. It's like because vlogging at first kind of weird, kind of videotaping yourself. But then it's you like, love it, don't but it's like rewatching. It's no, like rewatching no, the trip, like, yeah. especially like those people. Like we're in the airport and like. No, yeah, for sure. And you're like, or we're walking around, into a restaurant. Like, <laughs> they're like, they're like kind of like looking at you. I remember I went into a, we went to the, what was it, we went to a fireworks store, which will be, <laughs> which will be explained more. Everyone's just like looking at you, like especially like, because we're kind of in a rural part of the area, so they probably don't get that very often, right? Here comes these Cali boys in board shorts and whatnot. Not a whole lot of guys vlogging around here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll agree with you on that. So this is kind of a different experience. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be coming with cameras, drones, so we're going to... Camera crew. So if you're yeah. in, if you're around the area, absolutely come say hi. You can DM us. Max will be our camera. Man. We'll get you guys toward information. Do uh, it. We're fired up uh, for this meeting. And we're ready to go. We're, we've heard a lot of things about this tournament. So, um, yeah, I mean, our teammates, you'll see in the vlog who our teammates are for the, the first, the because we're playing co-ed quads yeah. on Friday, Sunday. It, and that's the thing about the Midwest. Uh, let's get into a little uh, about the Midwest here. Is that let's, let's get into it. Goals. Let's dive in. Let's get into it. It's obviously we were talking about yesterday, Max. Is people are just genuine here, and it's not like in, in California and in, in other places. It can kind of be like, oh, you don't know, You're like you it's like it's like a cultural said, thing. Exactly. Like you know if they don't like you, and you know if they like you, and that's like <laughs> how I kind of how I how like the world. Like I don't like you, and I'm gonna let you know it. I like you. That's the I'll let you know it. Yeah. You'd be a great Midwestern again. Yeah, you'd be <laughs> you fit right in. You love cheese curds. Hat, yeah, I've had like I so many. The cheese curds are just unreal. Cheese curds. I can't get enough. It, it, it slows me down on the court a little. Yesterday I was a little rough. Couldn't More really grounded. Move. But it's also like the people, like you said, you just connect. Like if I haven't seen a guy, if I was in California or whatever, if I haven't seen a guy since I played with club and like, since I was like 13, that's me. I wouldn't really say hi. But for you guys, like family, everyone's so nice here. So like what I mean that's gotta be like like kind of like the Aloha spirit in Hawaii like definitely it's like yeah I think close. it uh it kind of speaks to like the the Midwest culture is you know you guys there's not a whole lot to do around here you know there's not like beautiful beaches and cool hikes to do it's flat it's cornfields and so you know like growing up you're forced to make friends if right. you want to like go out and be social like you have to have good friends and I think that uh, that kind of speaks to that that you know you see someone you haven't seen in a while it's like oh awesome like right. go say what's up see how they're doing. Yeah. And I, what, so, what's your guys' opinion for the Midwest on West Coast guys? Honest opinion. <laughs> we talking SoCal or NorCal? Uh, let's, start with, let's start with NorCal, then go to SoCal. No, I like you. I like you guys. All right. Just us two. Or just NorCal? These are the only two. <laughs> no. no. Um, <laughs> NorCal guys. I mean, it's it's a different culture, and and uh, I don't want to like say anything bad about guys yeah, from I mean, California because you know they look at Midwestern guys they're probably like oh yeah they're just a bunch of corn eaters or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, so it's, they're right yeah and yeah, we eat a lot of corn here um, <laughs> but it's just a different you know the whole like surfer like oh, culture <laughs> like dude man <laughs> yeah. we, were laughing about how people, we were laughing about how people say bags and shit we're like Chicago people are like bag and then people oh. from California like so kind of like Bags. Bags, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Gage, where, where does uh, some, where's Brett Sheward live? Newport Harbor. <laughs> oh, dude, no way. <laughs> wedge, dude, see? I mean, that's the thing about, like... We're going out to the wedge. You know, that's the thing when we play, like, like when we play... Because, all right, for those of you who don't know, Northern California and Southern California, we consider it two different states. We're, like, yeah. we're totally against Southern California. So we have a very strong bias here. <laughs> Same kind of mindset. But when you're about to play, like, a Southern California team, I mean, that you hear that all in the locker room, like, let's go play. Let's wow. go. <laughs> you go. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Like, uh, of what? Of just what Not Bay or anything like that. Or just... Brett Sheward from Newport Harbor. <laughs> 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 so it's kind of fun, like, in your huddle before the game, you're like... Just he doesn't talk fun. like that, just for the no, record. No. <laughs> but, like, you know how it is, like, you're kind of making fun of the other team. Like, in club and in oh, college. Shuey actually knows. hates that, too. Let's just say that, too. Shuey's not in Southern California. No, he's not. He's a... He's he a cowboy at heart. Yeah. 
or a Midwesterner at heart. One or the other. Yeah, he's a just he's a straight from guy. Columbus. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I remember growing up in club, like when you're playing with just guys from the Midwest, and you play in like the SoCal tournament, and you're like, God, these guys are just very different. <laughs> the hair, yeah, they all have the same hair. Yeah, they have the hair. They're all tan. They're just like, bro, we're just here to chill, man. <laughs> like, and I mean, so, I'm sure that they're you know saying the same stuff about us. Like, yeah. oh, for sure. These guys are talking in these weird cheese. accents. Right? <laughs> they're eating, they're eating, We're eating a lot of cheese in uh, Giordano's. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I one time we were playing Balboa Bay. They're like, they, I remember they lost. It was the semis. They're like, and, and I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say anything negative about Balboa Bay. They, they <laughs> love it. I'm not saying they win a lot. But this team, they just, I guess they didn't really care. They're like, dude, let's just go to the beach. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so. I, for us, we usually wrap up with some sort of funny thing. I have, for all three of you guys, you guys are all going to be participating in this. We open it up a little bit to our fans here for some responses. Uh, and then I have some other things. We're going to do a little, would you rather? Ooh. Obviously, our guest goes first. We'll go in line here. You three got to answer these, okay? Um, well, a short explanation. Some of these questions are a little out there, but, you know, we got to give the people what they want. So, uh, it's Coming from a UH MVB fan. That was our first submission. Shout out to the memes from UHMB. Yeah, we salute them. Out. Those are absolutely big classic. Excellent memes. Those are awesome memes. For D train so first, have your hands stuck in a shaka, not a loose one, Ooh. or in a peace sign for the rest of your life. Shaka. Yeah. Loose shaka. For sure, shaka. Or tight shaka. I mean, if I had to choose between loose and, and tight shaka, I'm going loose shaka, for sure. But uh, you can do more stuff this, too. The UHMB fan says not loose though. Like tight, tight chaka. Show me your tight. That's what can you tough. do with it? What can you do with it? Rattle's got a tight chaka. More, I feel like you're more relaxed like that. If you're like this, like you're gonna, your forearms are gonna be freaking jacked. You can still so, punch. But it's stuck like that, so my you know. Gage, we haven't your response. To what? Peace sign or chaka? Like not. I can loose. do so much with a peace sign. Can you eat? Can I close them? No, I can't close them. I can, no. still, I can still pinch I can stuff. Fit a fork in here. I can pinch stuff with the yeah. with the shaka. <laughs> so my go, mandibles. So you say pizza. No, I say shaka. shaka probably. Shaka. Shaka. I can't close my pizza. Shaka, two, shaka, two shaka, shaka. Max, what about you? I might go peace sign just because I can play guitar. I just feel like That's I can true. just piano a little. Just a little <laughs> chord. Like the penguin? Yeah, like yeah. this. We get... <laughs> true. Okay, shaka. <laughs> <laughs> so we got something from Kiana. <laughs> underscore Kiana. I like how you said that. Kiana. She says, would you rather only drink water for the rest of your life or drink all of your favorite drinks but with a little bit of urine? Oh, my. Eternity? Water. What? What is that question? That's quite a so one. It's pretty innocent start. In the uh, <laughs> she I'm going to go water. P.S. I love you guys. Well, thank you, Kiana. All right, well, Kiana, you love us. So you want us to drink some. <laughs> <That's apparently. laughs> uh, I'm going water. Much. I pretty much only drink water as it is, so uh, yeah, I'll go water on that. I'm gonna go water. Yeah. Right. Like, that's like such a, there's another question from a different person, kind of on the same level as that question. With your injury? Zach ain't whack is his name. He ain't whack. He's not. He really isn't. <laughs> Eat a brownie that it tasted like poop, or actual poop that tasted like the best brownie ever. Dalt. Wow. Why the hell is he piss and poop? Maybe Zach questions? is a little whack. <laughs> Zach is Zach whack. Is whack. Think, I don't know. What would you say? I don't know. I don't know. Brownie. The brownie, brownie that tastes, tastes like, like poop? poop? But at least yeah, it's a, at least it's food. Then. You're eating poop. True. Uh, you're not eating poop, you're at least you're eating food. Yeah. As you can say, but, I brownie that tastes like poop, not a Are you in No, a, I don't know. Well, I just would, it'd be so hard to pick up though? poop with two shakas though, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to go with the brownie. <laughs> I think I would uh, go with the brownie, because you got it. Because you're more, you're you're gonna get your sick. Your moral dude. compass will at least be like, yeah, okay, yeah. At least you're like, I what's the next one, Joe? You had an answer. What was your answer? I I said the eat the actual brownie that tastes like poop. Yeah, I'm gonna go because then you know any brownie, you any brownie you have afterwards is gonna taste like the best brownie ever. So. Yeah, yeah, true. What'd you do, Joe? I didn't think of it that. Yeah, what would you do, what'd Joe? You do? Would, would you eat the poop it, if it tastes like brownie? That's disgusting. Brownies, it tastes good. Mine tastes like brownie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's not experiment with that. Uh, we have from Lingo or Lingho Four. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. We're horrible with names. We've said that before on previous shows. Would you rather get six pack by Ivan Zaitsev or Irvin Ingepath? So six pack is a shot straight in the face. I feel like Zaitsev hits harder. 
Yeah. For sure. I would go Ink of Beth. Yeah, same. I'm not trying to get whaled 80 plus miles. And I also Dude, feel Ink like... Ink could hit the crap out of the ball. Yeah, I know. Like, I know, I know. But okay. I just feel like yeah. Zaitsev can hit hard. Those, those two mile an hour difference, I'll take what I can get if it's okay. point blank at that so, range. So you're going to go Ink The lesser of yeah. two evils. Yeah, we'll go Ink of Beth. Right. Plus, I feel like he maybe he'd apologize after. I don't know about Zaitsev. All right. This one... No, all the way around probably. You think this so? one's a strange. This one's a strange question too. We have very to unique them, yeah. questions. I've never heard these. Would you rather questions? So, Estelle Bishop Bishop twenty four says, "Always have chapped lips or lose feeling in your pinkies." <laughs> Probably pinkies. Probably pinkies. pinkies. I can get around with four fingers. <laughs> yeah. My Wait. Can you can still use it though. You just don't. You lose feeling. You can't feel it. I mean, you can't really. Yeah. You can't use it if you can't. I don't really feel notice it. feeling in your pinky that often, unless you. You know what I mean? Well, I feel I crack. feel my pinkies. <laughs> yeah. yeah Cracking my pinkies. What would you pick, Joe? Uh, lose. Uh, setting. Uh, I don't use my pinky when I set, so. You don't? No. Uh, yeah, All right, well, they. <laughs> what about a shot? Uh, free clinic there, guys. <laughs> don't use your pinkies. All right, we're going to go two more here. Would you rather look 10 years older from the neck up or the neck down? Oh. Than I am right now? Than you are right now. Oh. Neck up. A little touch of gray. Nothing wrong with that. True. Okay. Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe I'll go bald, though. Yeah, who cares? I'm not here short enough already. <laughs> yeah, It'd be really it. weird to have a young face and then a, an old, old body. That's just really gross to me. This is a difficult question. Okay. Maybe last question here. Here we go. Is ra- I just went random scroll to this question. This is our last one. Okay. Would you rather date someone... <laughs> You nope, nope, no, I've never, <laughs> no, I would never date anyone. <laughs> no, we wouldn't do it, Joe. Never, week, so never, 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 we did, never. We wouldn't do it. Anybody also check out our new bio, you guys will like it, uh, on Instagram. But would you rather <laughs> date someone you love or date someone who loves you? It's a tough one. Who loves you? Of course. Yeah, but what if... But, but you, don't you don't love them. them. Yeah. Plenty of people could make that happen for you, Gage. It's <laughs> one way. Uh, no. Would you choose doll? Yeah, doll. Who you love? Being an expert on the subject, uh, yeah. I would say. Dude, that is a tough one. <laughs> I think I would go with someone who loves me, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Same. Because if you're if you're putting a bunch of effort in it yeah. and you're not getting anything back, that's just. So you'd rather have them do that? <laughs> yeah. I, in general, everybody like human. What about you, like, Joe? What would you, I yeah, what would you like human, choose? Joe? I would. I agree with that because human, uh, like psychology, just in general, you want to be accepted. You want to. Yeah. Feel, if you don't feel accepted or wanted. No. Yeah. That's like honestly. Especially team, when you're putting a your bunch of place. Yeah. That's just in, in general. So I, I would think that's the better option. Max, last one there. Yeah. No. I, I'm. I'm with you. Someone. Someone. Yeah. Who loves you. We're all okay. in it for the whole relationship. So, I guess Beyonce's out of the picture for me. (laughs) (laughs) Don, you want to wrap it up? I'm already, uh, absolutely in love with Beyonce. (laughs) Don, you want to wrap it up with a 10 second little singing verse here? Oh, we're going to do Music Monday, I thought. Oh, that's right. We'll save it. So, stay tuned to Music Monday, guys. We'll save it. Well, this has been super fun. We've kind of invited ourselves into Dalton's house here. Stay tuned. We got a. Gage been sleeping in the bathtub. I have. (laughs) We did tub time yesterday. That's where he used to That's my nap. That's that's my pod. But we've had a lot of fun here, kind of inviting ourselves, talking story. There's a lot more to come, a lot more videos to come, so make sure you stay tuned, guys. This week, anybody in the area, come on down to Wildpack and let us you DM our IG. Uh, we'll let you know, like, court information. You come be on the vlog. We'd love to meet you. Yep. Dalton, thank you for joining us, and thank you for the housing situation here. Thank me for having you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a lot of fun filming this episode, and this has been another episode of Out of the System.